What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to change the rear drum brakes on an 88 to 99-ish GMC, Chevy, whatever, gigantic 3500 dually truck. They're drums and they are a bit of a bear, but I'll show you step by step how to go through this and make it real easy. Get it in the air and then get the wheels off of it. Can't imagine why nobody's ever done this before. Step two, we're gonna have to remove the axle from this gigantic chunk of metal here. These, I guarantee you, are pretty locked on there. So either use a breaker bar or a super strong impact and then get ready to catch a bunch of fluid coming out of this thing with a pan or a bucket or whatever. You know, don't make a big mess. Now we're just gonna heat. Oh, yeah. Mmm, 1994 this truck is, and I would assume, yeah, that's a 1994 vintage if I've ever smelt one. Delicious. <laughs> Sometimes I take these jokes a little too far. All right, pull your axle. Look at that, it's not even got anything gouged off the end. Happy day. Next, there's this little ring hanging out inside of here. You gotta get that little puppy out of there because that's what's keeping this big nut on there that's holding the whole drum assembly on. Eh? How about you? Yeah, there we go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Next, you gotta get this little block out of here. This is what's locking that nut into place. Should just be able to pull it out with a pair of needle nose. Should be. Now you can walk this nut off of there. Shazam. Now that you got the nut out of there, it's time to pop a hernia and get this brake drum off of here. This ought to be a lot of fun. Oh, it's actually loose. I can't believe it. Holy shit. It's a little heavy. It's cool. Just doing some squats over here, guys. It's always a good idea to take a little video of where all your springs are, where all your set screws are, and everything like that, so that when you put it back together, you know where the hell it went. When it comes to replacing your wheel cylinder, you got two options. You can get behind the leaf spring here and you can fight, fight, fight to try and get those nuts off the back of this thing. But, uh, you know, they're probably rusted on and you don't have a lot of room to work with. Or you can take these four bolts off and remove the entire back plate and then fight with the wheel cylinder outside of that little cramped spot. We're going to try option two. Now we've got access to the back side of this plate and you can see the brake line is going into the wheel cylinder and eh, 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 there's two big bolts that hold these puppies in here. So we're going to fight to get this brake line off of here and then we'll take these two bolts out of this and the wheel cylinder comes out. Who wants to place any bets on whether or not this thing comes off with a wrench? I am using a line wrench so the odds are in its favor but I think this is going to end up being a vice grip special right here. Oh, what? Man, that never happens. A 
right in the gear oil. Every time. Just a quick, easy, clean job. Not a big deal. Get it done in an hour or so. Have yourself a couple of cold beverages. So here's everything laid out for you. You got that rear plate, you got your shoe assembly, and then you got this gigantic drum and its axle right there. This wheel cylinder, that's what's next on the list though. We pop out these two bolts, bada boom, bada bing, we got a new wheel cylinder in the house. Just a little ugga dugga here. And an ugga dugga there. Man. Here I've got myself a doorman part number Whiskey 79768. This is a wheel cylinder. They're both the same on either side. Each vehicle, of course, has different applications and such, but this is the wheel cylinder for my truck. A 94, 3500 with drums in the back. Very specific torque specifications, two Ugga Duggas. One, two, there we go. Precise, one, two, yep. I could really, I could feel it lock in. That was the proper ugga dugga zing. Wheel cylinders generally come with a bleeder installed in it. However, it's a conventional bleeder, which means you either need two people or you need some kind of specialized equipment. I love putting speed bleeders in everything. This allows you to open the bleeder, get in the vehicle, start jamming on the brakes, and it just spits it out. It doesn't let anything back in. So part number 639520 from Russell gives me a set of speed bleeders to put right in these stock cylinders and away I go bleeding the brakes myself. Next, we're talking about the brake assembly itself. So this is a new set of shoes. You can look up a bazillion different part numbers from whatever website you want to and you can get them for your own personal truck. For the kit, I went with the Dorman HW2588 on the driver's side and the 2589 on the passenger side. This is a self-adjusting kit. This means that this little star adjuster in the system adjust itself. Back in the day, old drum brakes, you had to get under there with a screwdriver and kind of set the thing. You'd try to drive, if it didn't move, it was too tight. If the car moved when you hit the brakes and it didn't stop, they were too loose. And if it was just right, it'd slow the car down. Pretty smart, huh? Except for you had to do it yourself. Now they got these little adjuster guys in here with a little knobby doohickey designed by NASA, really smart guys up there that are working at SpaceX now making millions of dollars, where you stomp on the brakes and this thing goes Oh, that's the perfect spot. Do it again. Oh, yeah. It's like a little Chinese lady walking on my back. Bam. It's perfect. It's adjusted. All right. Let's get back to it. Since I didn't fully disassemble the old brake system, I get to have a one-on-one -on -one where I am reassembling this whole thing with a total reference. The only thing that I got to take off of this old guy, this is the old emergency brake thing. I'm not even running an emergency brake on my truck because uh, I don't consider myself in an emergency ever totally normal but you just transfer this little arm over so if ever I decide to re replace my broken emergency cable it's there where'd that go I heard it it went that way Found it, no problem, all right, back at it here. Hot jambalaya, we're coming in like fried chicken on a Friday night. Tried a different pair of pliers, so maybe it doesn't fly away so badly. Right. Let's see if you wanna do that. You like that better? Yeah, there she is. Bam. All right, so this is our little e-brake arm. A couple more things you're gonna need to use. This little arm that sits across here and keeps the thing braced against itself. That's also part of the e-brake kit. And then this little guy up here that wiggles back and forth and holds your springs in place. Something like that. The self-adjuster arm is a bear to install the spring. I'm not gonna lie to you. I put this little bad biscuit in my vise, hooked this little guy on it, and then I pulled for all of my life to get this little thing to hook over top of it. It's not an easy trick, but it worked. I'm sure they make a special tool for it. But basically, get something to hang onto this or any kind of U-shaped thing and pull it over the lip with some muscles. First thing, we're going to put the backing plate on, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and attach the brake line. Probably a good thing to have that on there. Brake line on. 
four hours later. loosen and tighten the thing. So you want to make sure those are facing outwards. And reattach the little locking ring. Now you're ready to slide your axle back into the shaft. back in place, slap your wheels back on, and then go do the other side. you need to do it on your own. Remember, this works from 1988 on.